people of the internet people of the void i built the silliest burp suite extension why because the goal of this quarter q3 is building and i just wanted to start out by building a burp suite plugin for something i had envisioned in my head but it turned out to be really silly once you know it's in code and you can actually see what's doing but i think long term this could be a good extension if i add more features to it i just don't have any creative ideas at the moment it serves the purpose i want it to serve and it kind of just ends there but it might not be useful for a lot of people because i don't know but let me show you what it does future me here i forgot to put this in when i was recording but if you haven't already check out the newsletter link will be in the description it is a lot more frequent than the news than the youtube videos so i just put a brain dump of most of the things i find while i'm doing research things that might help you things that help me definitely and i just give it to you in a short concise newsletter that's easy and fun to read so check it out link will be in the description but also to answer the question why in the famous words of thomas shelby if we can we can do so. why why because we fucking can because we fucking can and if we can we do so let me show you what it does. This is uh, my extension. It's called Mapper just right now. I don't really have a name for it. But if we command uh, control actually and click here, it loads. It takes a while because it's sending an outbound request and then getting the response. It's sending something to, it's sending a payload to, you know, open AI, right? And then we get some output back, etc, etc. This is Instacart. Instacart has a uh, bug bounty program, so you can check their scope and test it out with them or any other program that has a bug bounty thing in scope. <laughs> what am I saying? You can test this out on any other bug bounty program, right? Cool. Uh, just make sure you check the scope so that you don't get things wrong. But we are going to copy this and then bring over this thing called um, MarkMap.js. I hope you can see it. But right now, it kind of just has the default, um, you know, the, the default code it comes with. So what the extension is going to do is it's going to print out all of our stuff in Markdown in the format that uh, we can use in this document, right? So my thinking in this, right, in building this thing was I need to be able to visualize the sitemap based on what's happening with the request, right? Is it... An authentication request is it a graphql endpoint is it admin functionality etc i kind of just hate the way the current sitemap looks in uh burp stream so this was my way of trying to fix it and um it works for me honestly so if we come back to this and where is it if we copy the output right from this and then we put it into this uh markmap.js it kind of just gives you this blob of what you know instacart actually has in terms of functionality in your sitemap right so this is what it looks like there's admin functions and then it shows you the urls for admin functionality if you can actually see it behind me right there there's authentication there's graphql calls it doesn't really show you um the names and the methods used in graphql i think that's feature we could add potentially right it just says there's a graphql endpoint and it puts it under graphql calls there's assets stuff you don't really care about you could you know tweak this to you know suppress the assets because you don't really need to see assets but if you just want a holistic picture of what the sitemap shows cool there's something called product i think it's just uh, a single product maybe on instacart there's stuff for coupons you could potentially test out what are they called race conditions with coupons right or test out random names for coupon codes and see if they have expired or not. Uh, I've seen people get bounties from that or, you know, just regular Pentest findings. And then there's uh, endpoints for ratings and orders. And then there's a category called MISC, which is just miscellaneous stuff. I don't know what this at is. You know, some of these squiggly, this batch. Batch could probably be under something called processing. Uh, maybe GPT just didn't catch that, but you could always refine or tweak you know the prompt with that out of the way that's what just this plugin or extension does right it takes your sitemap it takes what's in the scope in the sitemap you throw the output the markdown output it gives you into this thing and then that's it you can see your entire sitemap based on 
functionality and what the you know the URLs actually pertain to. But just to look at the code, right, um, so that you see what it's doing. I used Jython. I looked at uh, Java for a while, but I was like, ain't no way I'm actually writing this in Java. I don't have the time or the brain power to actually do it. So we have a class that's called Burp Extender. You know, class definitions, all that. The callbacks are going to be really important because that's what gives you most of your functionality, right? Over here, we obtain an instance of the I extension helpers, which is some stuff in uh, Jython and the libraries and the methods and doesn't matter as long as it's there it's gonna help you but one of the methods uh, we could use I don't know if I'm using the right word method F computer science terms bro but this thing we can define an HTTP listener right and then using callbacks we can define the name of our extension so callbacks like I said this is gonna be really important it's gonna extend your functionality and help you do things right so to get all the entries in the sitemap we define a variable use the callbacks get sitemap there's no input really needed it just gives us what it what we wanted to and then we use this loop um, to get the in scope URLs right uh, get URL to string sitemap entries which is this and then callbacks again to check if the URL is in scope one thing you really need to remember if you're gonna write an extension in Jython Python is that you are still going to be using like the Java interpreter with the way it just pipes everything to Java so you have to kind of use the long way in a sense to write your for loops or your while loops you can't really use Python syntax that's native to Python it just has to be the long way you actually have to write a for loop and this is a for loop just in a short way and I it kind of works with Jython, but if you write the plus equals and all that in your while loops, it doesn't work. Um, this was some debug stuff, it doesn't really matter. So now that we have our in scope URLs, right? Um, analysis results this is uh, a variable we define, and then we're gonna send the URLs in scope to GPT, and we do this in a function, right? So we can ignore this for now. And in our send to GPT function, we define the API URL. This is where you send your, you know, push requests if you want to get data back from, you know, GPT, chat GPC, or whatever it is. And then this was just for testing. And then this is my API key. You kind of have to, you know, make an API key, throw it in there. If you want to use this, go ahead. I think I'm going to leave like 15 bucks on it. Uh, you can test this out. Just be generous, use two bucks or something and then leave something else for everyone else to test it out. But go ahead, try the API key out and then uh, we define the headers, um, application JSON. The only header we actually need is the authorization, which is then gonna be our API key, right? And then we have the prompt. You could refine this however you want, um, but this is a prompt I use. It makes sure that we get the template back without too much else from ChatGPT, right? And then we're gonna be using GPT model 4.0. I did some testing with 3.5, which is cheaper, and 4, which is also cheaper, but they're just not smart enough. So unless you can tweak the prompt to make it work, 4.0 is gonna be good to go for you, which is, I think it's a bit more expensive, but I can afford a couple of API calls on GPT. I'm not that broke, right? So all our data is just gonna be in a JSON data dump. And then, like I said, we're still gonna be using the Java interpreter with Jython, the conversion thing. So you can't just write your while loops and your connections with like the Python request library because Java doesn't know that. You're gonna have to use some Java native stuff. So at the top here, you can see we import from java.net, the URL and the URL, HTTP URL connection. And then from java.io, we import the buffer reader input stream and then output stream all this is going to be used uh, to send and receive the response so this part which is defining the connection we open the connection we set the headers right and then using the dot data output stream we are going to send the request right so it opens the stream writes the bytes flushes closes the connection but we Get the connection right if the response is an http okay which is probably just going to be a 200 um input stream opens reads into the buffer 
using a proper while loop like i said you kind of have to go the long way since it's also native to java and you can't just do everything in python this would have been easier with like a one line in python but cool right and then it returns our data in json otherwise it errors out right and at the top here like you see um this is actually just the blob it returns from gpt it's a whole lot of messes it's a whole lot of stuff it's a mess so we kind of have to clean it up um, since it's in json so what we're going to look for is the choices and then we drill down into that we go into message and then what we really want is the content of the message we get from gpt right so if we come here and if we search choice um here is going to be the choice that has an array and then in that array we have what's next message right choice then there's index there's message and then in that message there's another array and what we want is the content which is this stuff right here so um that's literally it and then it just prints the response that is literally it nothing fancy nothing too cool just a silly extension that i think i needed so if we run it again you see what it does it takes a while because like i said it's sending requests um yeah man that's it hopefully this kind of sparks your curiosity regarding you know writing your own burp suite extensions maybe or just building something in general that people you could use or the general public could use as well so um if we overwrite this again does it produce the same thing it kind of does really so it's the same prompts the same urls but obviously if you have a lot more urls in your sitemap it's gonna populate a lot of things so uh, just make sure this website if you're hosting it locally it can handle that amount of data i don't know how much data you can handle from just this page alone so you kind of have to think about that but if you have any suggestions or ideas, um, I'm going to put this up on GitHub. You can submit a pull request or leave a comment. Maybe you can actually work on features for this. But like I said, I kind of don't know where this could head. I think right now it works for my use case, just giving me a high level overview of, you know, the app I am testing. But that's it. That's my silly Burp Suite extension. We need to build a lot in Q3, write a lot of code read a lot of code so that we get better at breaking as a byproduct of that but with that being said cheers people of the void i will catch you in the next one peace